Yo, yo, YouTube, what's crack? I'm like a Jack Smack and this is Waffle Man for video. This is the second time I'm making this video because, of course, my camera ran out of space. But anyways, like I was saying, man, NBA 2K19 actually released some information yesterday. Well, more importantly, Mike Wang, who actually, once you look at his tweet, Wang is actually pronounced Mike Wong. So everyone, all these YouTubers have been getting it wrong. I've been getting it wrong. This came out of nowhere, never knew it, but from now on, I'm going to call him Mike Wong, like he said on Twitter. Uh, but anyways, Mike Wong was talking a lot yesterday, a little bit of information today, about TakeOver Mode. TakeOver Mode sounds kind of cheesy, it sounds more cheesy than the Grand Badge, it sounds like, first of all, he says it's not a badge, and it sounds like you can go into TakeOver Mode whenever you want to. And the duration of TakeOver Mode depends on your overall and the abilities you have. So, basically, one of Mike, Rain, uh, Mike Wong's tweets was that, you see, locks will be able to stonewall ball handlers more frequently than other archetypes. Rim protectors unlock grab blocks and other content, and both archetypes can cancel offensive badges and takeover uh, skills. So, uh, takeover sounds really cheese, man. I mean, I don't know how it's going to play. We haven't seen gameplay of takeover mode yet. But if you have a lockdown defender or a rim protector in 2K19, I think it's going to be more important to have those builds because now you have offensive badges to cancel out, which of course defensive builds have been doing that, but now you got takeover skills to try to cancel those out. So now it's like a lockdown defender has way more added value in 2K19. But moving on, every archetype has some sort of mechanism to prevent abuse of the strengths. Slashes degrade when they repeatedly take contact, perimeter shooters degrade when they have to wake up too much to get a shot. Sounds realistic, it makes sense. Over dribbling for playmakers was not accounted for in 19 uh, until 2K19, which we're gonna have to see about that. Uh, he also says shot creators get a boost when shooting in advantage jumpers like spin shots and step back shots. Well, if you're a shot creator, which is primary shot creator, you should have been doing this anyways. All drifting jumpers, fadeaways, all of that stuff is your best shot because you have difficult shots. But, anyways. Uh, he's, he also talked about the glass cleaners, which I've seen a lot of YouTubers make videos saying the glass cleaners are going to be the move. By the way, every time Mike Wang talks about, or Mike Wong, I keep getting, I keep saying Wang, but every time Mike Wong talks about a build, he's talking about a primary, your, your build is the primary build. So you can still have dual archetypes, but the primary has to be the archetype he's talking about. So a primary rebounder gets a lot of love this year. His favorite additions is in takeover mode. They get a target on the floor showing where the ball's gonna go on missed shots. Gives them a huge rebounding advantage. They also get L elbow clear offs after offensive boards prior to putbacks, which sounds kind of cheese. That's that, that part actually sounds kind of cheese. But I've seen a lot of YouTubers and people on Twitter talking about how the primary rebounder is gonna be very cheese in 2K19. And I'm just gonna say, pump the brakes, man. Because even though this sounds cheese, listen, it sounds like something that would be in like a first person shooter, like something like that. But I wouldn't say like just because you can see the target on the floor, like just because you have a heartbeat center back in Modern Warfare 2. And I know this because I used to use a heartbeat center, but just because you have a heartbeat center in Modern Warfare 2 or a target finder in Black Ops doesn't mean you're going to get the kill. So in this case... Just because you see you have the target on the floor and you see where the rebound's gonna end up, doesn't mean you're gonna get the rebound. And it doesn't also mean you still gotta take into account boxing out. You still gotta take into account how you're gonna rebound, when you're gonna press the triangle button, and you're still gonna take account other players on the court who might even be great rebounders already. So listen, man, it's a crazy skill. It sounds it sounds pretty cheesed. Sounds lit. It sounds pretty cool. I, I can't wait to see what it looks like in game. But let's pump the brakes on the primary rebounders for just one second. I mean, let's. I see people overhyping builds already, and no one has used them. Like, t chill out. But moving on, playmakers are the only ones who can put someone on their back with an ankle breaker, and they also get boosted to their shot after breaking someone off the dribble. So it seems like if you're a pure, if you're a primary playmaker, uh, you're, you're going to be able to put people on their backs. You're the only build that could put people on their backs. Takeover just applies to your primary archetype until you reach. See, this is what I'm saying. Your primary archetype is where the takeover skill will go. 
So until you reach level 94, which I ain't gonna lie, man. None of my builds in 2K18 have reached 94 overall. So it sounds like we have the same system back from 2K18 uh, where we have this overall system. I mean, we don't know yet. I mean, we've just been given the overall. But I'm assuming that since he said 94 overall and he didn't say any type of rep. He didn't say any type of rep. He said 94 overall for that archetype. So I'm just assuming we're going to be using the same system as in 2K18. Which is, honestly, it's unfortunate because... I don't like the overall system, man, because the overall system is for each specific build you make. I'd rather just have a rep system, bro. Uh, but anyways, man, applies to your primary archetype. Once you get the 94 overall, both of your archetypes will be able to use the takeover skill. So that means it might be better to have a dual archetype in 2K19 instead of a, even though primary archetypes are cheese, it might be better to have a dual archetype in this 2K. Uh, but then he says at that point you get you know take over with both archetypes But if you're a pure build like a lockdown defender you stay hot longer at 94 So I'm wondering what that duration is gonna be because if it's gonna change from one minute to two minute at 94 of all Is it gonna double is it gonna triple like you know what's gonna happen man because Having takeover with two builds at two archetypes sounds kind of cheese man he also talked about pull scores. So pull scores get a lot in takeover, power back downs, clear outs, spin slash drive content, boosted hooks, fades, shimmies, and that's what he said, man. I mean, it sounds good. We're gonna have to see how it is, man. I don't know what takeover. Like we we, we still we're, we're still pretty unclear on what this is. But moving on. Takeover modifies shot windows for shooting builds, so I'm, I'm assuming shot shooters and shot creators to make it easier to hit perfect timing. It also boosts or unlocks the full potential of the shooting badges, so limitless range for example, only shops and takeover can bomb from great range with any effectiveness. So that just means if you're a shot creator or you're a shop shooter in takeover mode, you're going to be getting easy greens from wherever you're supposed to be, like the shot creator, the mid range is going to be easier to green. Sharpshooter is going to be able to easier the green from three point. It's, it's, it sounds cheese, bro. Then he says, What this man asks, what type of takeovers do us lockdown guess? Now, this is very interesting, uh, because this is very important, of course, for me and my channel, of course. But shot contest boosts, ability to cut off dribblers and make them pick up the ball, canceling out offensive takeover skills. Boosted steals including exclusive ability to knock the ball loose on catches Advantage in securing 50-50 balls, which you know, usually it's just it's just randomness to be honest Chuck and grab with fewer fouls and more aggressive content. So more aggressive defensive ability This sounds like a lot for the lockdown defender man. I mean listen if you're a pure lockdown defender I mean, shit, man. You, you, you're, you're not, your shot contest is already at 99. Your, your freaking steal is already at 98. You're telling me in takeover mode, you're going to have boosted shot contest, boosted steal, ability to cut off dribblers, make them pick up the ball, cancel out any takeover skill, and then you're going to have fewer... Listen, the, the biggest thing for me in 2K18 was the fouls, man. If they can lower the amount of fouls a lockdown defender has when playing good defense and make the lockdown defender more aggressive in 2k19 with this with this paragraph right here this shit sounds cheese but this is you gotta take into account also this is when the lockdown is in takeover mode so here's the thing about the lockdown defender in takeover mode right you probably already got the hall of fame defense to stop you know what i'm saying you might probably have defensive anchor once you get to 92 overall then you got your defensive upgrades you got your defensive attributes already once you enter takeover mode, it's like Ultra Instant Goku out that motherfucker, bro. I mean, I mean, listen, it, I, am I lying? Based on this paragraph, if you can get past a lockdown defender who's a good player, I'm saying a good player has a winning record on the park, you can take them down. Kudos to you, man, because this shit sounds cheese. I mean, defensive stopper already lowers your attributes and erases badges. But if you're in takeover mode and you gotta deal with this, it's over, man. I mean, listen. Rest in peace, any offensive builds in NBA 2K19 trying to 
get over a lockdown defender, man, because it's, it's gonna be rough, man. I, I'd hate to face a lockdown defender in takeover mode because they have like this boosting steals and it goes above the attributes of 100. So this shit is gonna be cheese. Listen, takeover mode is some cheese, bro. Like, I don't know what 2K is thinking, man. Instead of focusing on gameplay, it, it, it's like they did focus on gameplay. At the same time, that takeover shit, bro. I don't know how it's gonna be, man. And also, finally, Mike Wong said takeover length depends, like I said before, on your overall rating. Bums can get it, but it's super short, which is what I was saying before. It's kind of weird, cause it's not a badge, but it seems like everybody can use takeover mode. It's just like a button you press where you turn Super Saiyan, and Super Saiyan drains stamina. Like Super Saiyan, actually, I probably should compare it to Kaioken. Cause Kyle can use the stamina, and once Kyle can stamina, once you're done, it, like Kyle can can only be used for a limited amount of time. So it's like going into Kyle can, you know, for Goku, and using that, getting a boost in some of your attributes, you know, and then all of a sudden you turn back to normal because of time right now. And then over time, once you, you know, upgrade your character and you reach higher overalls, then you're gonna be able to use Kyle can for longer durations so that's what takeover mode sounds like which the shit is cheese man i mean if think about it if you can activate it anytime you want while playing a game that means in part games if you're a lockdown defender don't even use it until you really need to use it like if it's a closed game and it's 19 19 on the park that's when you use takeover mode like it's going to be a strategic thing to use if you can only use it once per game so I don't know man, shit sounds cheese, we're gonna see. Let me know what you think in the comment section, leave a like for more. I'm out for now, peace.